This the only motherfucker I ever known to play with a broke leg. <laughs> no, really, he played with a damn broke leg. You didn't know that? <laughs> it's like all your hard work uh, you put in for over a decade, just paying off in that one moment. It's amazing. That summer, that was one of the darkest moments of my life thus far. And that's actually how I got into writing, and got into rapping. Skating is really relaxing to me, really relieving. Yeah, it's definitely something that I always kept close to me and I always will. Yeah, definitely. It really just all set in right now, you know, like back home and you know, I had a, a little moment with the family, but it's all it's all been kind of a dream until right now seeing seeing that and, and everything, it's it's crazy. We've been out the last two weeks and just down at our uh, hometowns and stuff, just training and making sure we're in shape. So finally you come here, see my locker, you know, trying on shoes and it's amazing. And, and I mean, I'm excited to get started. Like you just know a lot of people don't get to experience like having your name up here in the NFL locker. When I looked up and saw it, like, and actually got to touch it, man, it was, it was a whole different feeling. It's like, all your hard work uh, you put in for over a decade, just paying off in that one moment, that one phone call, and it's just, it's overwhelming. It doesn't set in until now for me, so it's amazing. Hello? Les Snead, Los Angeles Rams. You want to be an L.A. Ram? Yeah. Whoa! Took a huge lick. This is how you do it in the big leagues. Yeah, he, he's bringing the juice this time. He and he goes through his progression, nowhere to go, and sacked. Man, that guy can play football. Yeah, you think? Kelly. Well, he broke out the back side. Kelly. Since I've been able to pick up a football, so it's been since I was about five years old, and I always just thought, like, man, like if I can do this forever, I would love to be able to be a professional football player. Wake up every morning and do play football. Like, that's a dream come true for me. Really, today was the first day that we really had all of our uh, rookies here with the drafted players and with the undrafted college signings that we've made. You know, a lot of new faces around here, and it was a good start today. Coach, did you notice how nervous some of them were? And if you did, how did you calm them down? Yeah, you know, a lot of wide eyes, but it, but I seem, it seemed to be that they were excited, Jim. Uh, just telling them to take it one day at a time, making them feel welcome. They're a part of this family now, so uh, it's exciting. You know, the team room was a lot more full this morning than it's been with about 65 guys now that we've got almost that full 90. And my second part to that is how do you feel kind of about maybe your next layer of depth with this roster? I think that's something that we're extremely intentional about developing. I think Les and his staff did a great job being able to identify a lot of these players and, and they worked in coordination with our coaching staff for what was a really smooth process with the draft and being able to sign our free agents afterwards. Uh, and then we're excited about getting these guys in here and, and seeing you know, what type of role they're going to carve out for themselves. When I got to get up early, I usually get up and try to listen to some music. Because, I mean, that's going to get me going a little earlier, so. I've been going over all my plays and everything, so I'm ready to go out there and just show the coaches and everybody what I can do on the field. For me to be a rookie means that I got to be a sponge for any guy that's had experience in this league, I'm trying to learn from them. I got to make sure it don't look like there's no drop off between me and the vets. So it, it means a lot to be a rookie for sure in this league. I got on my grind, ain't no more stressing. Can't nobody stop me from my blessings. I mean, I wasn't one of those highly drafted guys, but I feel like I can compete at any level. So yeah, I definitely got a chip on my shoulder. Hello. John, how we doing, man? How you doing, Coach? I'm good, man. You ready to roll? Yes, sir. Where, where are you at right now? I'll be in Detroit right now. Okay, good, man. Well, congratulations, man. We're happy to have you on board. I'm going to put you on the phone with, with Coach Skip Pete, but I'm happy for you, man. <laughs> Appreciate it, Coach. Oh, with no face mask, you say, huh? No, no face mask. I don't get this on camera, and then they're bro. gonna get there. They get it on camera too. Dick buckets, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, last year you had 
seemed like a pretty specific role in mind for someone like Lance Dunbar, kind of as a change of pace back. Do you see John Kelly kind of similarly? And is he ready to be a guy who maybe allows you to get Todd Gurley off the field? When you look at it, John's a physical, violent downhill runner, did a lot of good things at Tennessee. Kelly plays bigger than he is, 5'9", 205, but he's pretty physical. Trying to dance outside, and he got the edge. Kelly, touchdown! Yeah, that guy could play football. Yeah, you think? In terms of Lance, where he's already had some production in the league, you could really see what his role was and what a nice job he did as that change of pace third down back for the Cowboys throughout his career. We've got confidence in John, but but I think he's got a chance to, to earn a role based on the way that he plays and practices day in and day out. It's back to square one. I mean, when I was a freshman in college, I didn't jump right in, just instantly getting reps. As long as when my number's called, when my name is called to jump in there, I make sure that I'm well prepared. And I'm going to go out there and make sure I do what I got to do. Good job. Keep your shoulder square. Sit. Hit. When you watch him play, it seems that the sticks are constantly moving. I mean, he's getting first downs, first downs, first downs, three, four, seven, ten, four, seven, ten. Now you got to bounce to this gap because the guy's going to wrap to right here. You got to slide and get to him, slide and get to him. I think John's a very hard-nosed running back that's going to bring a little bit different type of mentality to our room. There you go. Keep that hand down. You don't have to be that high with your accepting the handoff. Now, hey, the reason I keep telling you, be, be consistent on how you take the handoff because it's got to be exactly the same whether you're faking or whether you're running with it. Okay? If you're more exaggerated on the fake, then the defense is going to know. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, you know what I mean? You got to make it look the same. Continue to get better every day. Make every day my best day. Those are my only expectations is to constantly get better, constantly learn something new, and just make every day my best day. So that's that's all I can think of. Man, work on three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Work on three, work on me. One, two, three, work. work. What's up, fellas? We sitting up front, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah, this is where we at, but y'all sitting up front. Ain't no vest in here today, bro. We good. I know, man, I know. I'm, I'm... Don't, don't make me sit KP on you, bro. All right, all right, we'll see, we'll see. My name is Jacques McClendon, and I'm the director of player engagement with the Los Angeles Rams, and uh, you know, it's really a great role. You know, it's a man of many hats uh, at its core. It's just being there for the guys and making sure they have what they need in, in anything off the field. I retired January 2017, bro. I played seven seasons, so believe me. Just enjoy the ride, bro. Work every day. You know, I was blessed to play in this league for six years and uh, make it to seven camps. And but one of the things I think it gave me is perspective, that this thing is about more than football. Fellas, first off, congratulations. Every single one of y'all was hand selected to be in this building. So uh, don't take it for granted. The ability to walk out on a Sunday and play a football game is one of the most beautiful blessings you ever be given. But I want to put out one statistic to you. This is the percent of players from the NCAA to the NFL that make it into these seats. 1.6%. Y'all in the 1%. Do not take it for granted. That's the hardest part is to tell these guys that, you know, we got 27 right now, and, you know, you may only see six to seven make the roster and another six to eight make the practice squad. And those are the brutal realities. But once you understand that you gave everything you got, you can live with whatever the outcome has to be. So, fellas, all y'all were great in college. Well, who's going to show up and be the great pro? We got unbelievable stories on this team. Dom Hatfield, right down here from inner city LA, went to Utah, got in a little bit of off the field trouble. He was a rookie tryout guy, a guy that nobody expected to make this team. What did he do? He came in every day and worked. What did he do? He opened the season on this kickoff team because he took every day seriously. Who's going to be Dom Hatfield? Uh, opportunity for these young guys to get some work in. Allen grabbed eight yards, and he got the Chargers across midfield. They've got third down and a short two from the 49. Cardale Jones in the pocket, throws right. That ball is picked. Dom Hatfield jumped the routes, and the undrafted rookie from Utah with a momentum change for the Los Angeles Rams. Doesn't get a call draft day. Only gets a call here because somebody failed their physical. He drives in the day of rookie minicamp, has two picks. Doesn't stop making plays, makes the 53-man roster, and carved out a niche on his team. They all have a chance, and I think Dominic Hatfield, his story is a great indication of that. Die with his mother, or he made a decision. I can wake up and I can live for mom. And he knocked Mike Tyson out simply because his why was greater than that punch. 
His why was greater than defeat. His why was greater than his trial and his tribulation. And I'm telling you, if you don't know what your why is and your why isn't strong, you're going to get knocked out every single day. I just want to talk through a few things. So our program is called our Cleats for Character program. So these cleats that you see on these tables, we are donating it to y'all. The reasons why we're donating, one, is because we believe in you, but two, we want these to be reminders of your worth and the power that you have. As you all shared your stories, and I want you to own your story, but never forget your worth. So a little bit about me, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm from the district. I, I, the same thing y'all are doing, fool. But just like he was saying, I found a way out. Got, got a full scholarship, whatnot. But even when, I, even when I did that, I went to jail too when I was in college. Booked for a robbery. And it was really, that time, I didn't do it, you know? But that was all, all the previous, all the bad stuff I was doing. You feel me? And finally, I caught up to me. Being there today with, with the young kids reminded me of a younger me. And I was, I was there, I was them. Just them being able to see me and what I did and then when I actually opened up, they were shocked to, to, to hear that coming from a person in my shoes, a person that's playing for the NFL Rams. This time last year, Dominique Hatfield didn't know what his future in football would look like. Hatfield Sophomore going into junior year, over the summer, I was arrested, convicted for a robbery, uh, which I didn't do. Uh, first off, the, the description of the suspect was 6'1", 190, and I was telling my lawyer the whole time, man, like, man, I wish I was 61190, like, I'll be a beast that corner, like, but yeah, it was, it was, it was hectic. Yeah. Oh yeah, watch that bag, huh? Bag trying to get you. Yeah, that's good feet right there. Oh yeah, good reaction right there. I sat in jail for a week, and when I got out, they stripped me for my scholarship. They kicked me out of school. And then I had to go through that whole process of getting reinstated. That summer, that was one of the darkest moments of my life thus far. And that's actually how I got into writing and got into rapping. I just, I just started writing everything, all my emotions down, everything that was, that was hurting me up until that point. Stay focused just in case they plotting. Had to go and get some money. I was out of options. Call for it. Ain't no tussle. You pull up with chopsticks. For any talking tough, popping hot. I got it on my own. Nobody put me on. Fake facts, how do you really going strong? Fresh off the field to the booth just to make a song. And I used to carry that just to make it home. I'm a dog, I'm a dog, I say roof. It wasn't really rapping at first. It was just writing, just writing. Whether it was just getting thoughts out or, or poetry or even even just just flowing, whatever it was, whatever it was, I just had to get I just had to get it out. My music represents the, the, the story and the struggle and, and how, you, how you get out the struggle, really. I tell my personal story, some nights not being able to eat, uh, running the streets and uh, uh, going from all that to playing football, going overseas. Yeah, just, just true life events. Football led me to this. Once football was taken away, and if it was never taken away, then I, I probably never would have found another outlet. But once. My first love was stripped. I had to find another one. Rapping definitely my, my second love. I wasn't able to be a first round. I wasn't able to get drafted. You know what I, mean? I got in trouble. I had to find a different route. But when I got that shot, when I got my opportunity, I took it and ran with it. So I know for a fact, y'all gonna get out of here. And when y'all get the opportunity, y'all gotta take it and run with it. Let's get it. Hatfield faced assault charges from one incident and robbery charges from another. But after a one-game suspension, the senior cornerback appears to have turned his life around. What up top? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah, baby! If I can do it, yeah, they can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Uh, coming from my situation, single parent, mother, going to college, getting it all taken away from me, then being blessed to get it back, and then joining the Rams and playing in front of my hometown. Just, if I can do it, anybody can do it.
<clears throat> but 1971, Tommy Prothero was the coach. So we had the first team meeting. Then he sends us off to meet our new uh, position coach. He's going to explain to us the new the defensive line. Yeah. So he, he goes on and on and on for like 30 minutes. And yeah. then he turns around and he says, well, what do you think? What do you think? Deacon Jones stands up in the back and said, that shit ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and we ain't going to do it. And he walked out. And he walked and he back up. and went with him. I was going, holy crap. I look at Jack. This, this is our first day on the job. <laughs> this is not looking good. We're here at the 2018 Los Angeles Rams Legends Community Reunion Weekend and really get a chance for everybody to engage in each other and get to know each other a little bit better. This is kind of, uh, how you doing? Trying to stay on top of the world. Yeah. <laughs> stay on top of the ground. How we doing? How you doing, man? Yeah. Just trying to coach that old D-line, man. <laughs> Hard way to make a living. This <laughs> the only mother I ever known to play with a broke leg. <laughs> no, really, he played with a damn broke oh, leg. You didn't know that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've been looking for you forever, dude. I, I, I always miss you whenever I see you, dude. Whenever I see you on the tube, I see you, I'm like, is yeah, Rich going to be at this thing or what? I don't, I don't come to Kyle Eversgert has done a tremendous job of bringing us back together. We're a family. I mean, we, especially us that, that only played with just the Rams. It's a tremendous, tremendous asset, I think, for not only just the franchise, but for, for us. It's gratifying to come back and talk to these, you know, your teammates and find out, you know, what what do they think about that? About those years. He's bucking, he's bucking, he's bucking, he's gonna run. He's hit by Dreyer, he bobbles the ball free, bouncing around, young has got it. He's heading for the end zone. The Back in our days, we developed a, a relationship with everybody in that locker room. And that's what allowed us to be a good football team. We trusted each other and we, we got the job done. So Jack, what uh, uh, are some of your impressions having watching what's happened with the Rams? What uh, are kind of some of your impressions? They're on the right track now. Here we go, man. No balls on the ground, let's go. Tremendous athletes. These guys are, you know, phenomenal <laughs> athletes. And I'd love to watch them be good. We saw a lot of that last year. We respect the hell out of all y'all, and thank you so much for being here with us. We want to break it down on Rams real quick. Hope y'all get in here with us real quick. Rams on three. One, two, three. Rams. We're not just a, a football team. We're a family, and we respect each other. It, it draws us, you know, us players together. It's week one. Got done with that. It's my day off, so I'm about to. Go and get me a board and go and relax a little bit, man. Well, I mean, for me, like, when you gotta, when you get a board, you gotta make sure you got a board that fits your feet. You know what I'm saying? But I'm thinking about having this board longevity while I'm here. So I'm gonna try to get one that I can keep for a minute while I'm down in LA. The type of skating that I do now, like when it, I'm like doing bowls and like ramps and everything, like I don't want wheels that's like too hard because I won't be able to slide. So I get like softer wheels. Uh, I'm about to get bearings to go inside of the wheels. That's gonna help it rotate more. So it's gonna help the speed. And I'm gonna get trucks, which is gonna help my grinding. So I gotta make sure I see how everything's gonna look on the board first before I end up riding it. I should be able to skate a bowl or two. Alright, that work. The skateboard community, it consists of so many different people. I was able to learn from a lot of those different people, especially just like being able to go from Chicago to Minnesota to Detroit, Phoenix. Everywhere I went, I brought my skateboard. I try to be a little relaxed now though. I can't be as hardcore as I used to be, man. Yes, sir. Are you a picture bro? Oh yeah, definitely. Huge fan, bro. Oh yeah. Well, look at this here, bro. Oh man, appreciate it. These kids see the cameras and shit, they probably gonna think I'm extra good. <laughs> I'm all right, man. I ain't, I can't stump them like I used to, man, but I can do them. I can pop them up, maybe take two, take three. <laughs>
Uh, nah, man. <laughs> I just, uh, I, yeah, I, I play for the Rams, though. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, appreciate it. I'm at the, I got a skateboard, bro. <laughs> Skateboarding definitely helps my balance and my coordination. Balance because, I mean, I got tired of falling and, and landing on my, my back and my butt all the time, man. I didn't want to bust my ass all the time. So I was, you know, I had to learn how to fall, had to learn how to brace myself. And I mean, skateboarding definitely helped me a lot with that. Just like taking hits from different angles and learning how to keep my feet. This is definitely something that I just brought into the game with me. So, yeah, skateboarding helped me a lot in my football career. That was clean as hell. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> hey, that shit was huge. <laughs> that was a big one. The coaches always say the same. They always just be like, don't, don't be out there trying to get hurt on the skateboard. I mean, I've been skating for so many years now. I, I know what I should and shouldn't be doing, what I can and can't do. But at the same time, it is kind of a, a dangerous sport. But that's the same thing as football, though. So, I mean, I, I take limited risks out here. When I first started skating, everybody would be like, man, black people don't skate, man, you know what I'm saying? So I always did it on my own because I thought it was cool. You know, I always thought I was gonna be a pro skater. That's all, all the kids talking about was I sponsored. <laughs> Cause that's the that's the goal when you out here skateboarding is to be able to support your family, support yourself as much as you can. So yeah, I was definitely out there every morning when I was a kid, skateboarding, go to football practice, skateboard, go to football practice, skateboard is the same routine for me. Yeah, we got a few scratches here, here and there, you know. Shows that I've been out here grinding on. I did a couple of tricks today, man. I wasn't just out here cruising around. So trucks got a little bit of scratches on it, you know, put in some work today. But I got my stickers, a lot of them look pretty clean right now. I'm gonna make sure I next time y'all see this board, it's gonna be a little, it's gonna be a little bit more broken in, I'll say. <laughs> Skating is really relaxing to me, really relieving. It's not football, you know. So I, you, I feel like when you, and when you in a sport, a professional sport like that, you gotta find things other than just that sport to ease your mind. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be wrapped up in the 24/7. But it's definitely something that I always kept close to me, and I always will.